Hello, and welcome to the Brook Willow Knitting Podcast, because what the world needs right now is just another knitting podcast. My name is Anna, and I'm coming to you from Minneapolis, Minnesota. This is a video about knitting, a side of sewing, and whatever crafty endeavor is piquing my interest. Um, so, I wanted to start this podcast because I wanted to connect with all the other talented makers in this community. I've spent years watching other YouTube podcasts like The Gentle Knitter, Be Mandarines, Knitting Traditions, and so much more. And it's just so fun watching them talk about the projects they're making, their completed works, buying different types of yarn, and even like opening my mind up to new books or magazines that are out there. And after all of that watching, I finally wanted to be able to talk about my own knitting and what I've been working on and what's inspiring me as well. Um, so here we are now. I have been knitting for 20 years now. I started when I was 10. The first 10 years, I pretty much just made scarves, just garter stitch scarves. And then I got wild and did a rib stitch scarf for a while too. Um, finally, after 10 years, I started to learn how to do color work and cable knitting and took on harder patterns like socks, mittens, and sweaters, which is now my favorite. Um, so yeah, I first want to show you some recent projects that I've finished. Um, so the first one I'm going to start with is the Magnolia Sweater by Camilla Vad. I'm sure a lot of you have seen this one because it's very popular right now. So. Here is the sweater. I am just absolutely in love with it. It turned out so amazing. Um, I use Knitting for Olives Merino and Knitting for Olives Silk Mohair and I use two strands of each, four strands total, to make this thicker, fluffy, drapey, squishy fabric. Um, one thing that I really love about this sweater is the neckline. As you can see, it's nice and thick because it's doubled down and knit together before the rest of the uh, lace starts. Um, so it creates just this thick, cozy neckline that just hugs your neck like a little cloud. Um, I also obviously loved the lace work on it. That's what drew me to make this. I had never done lace work before. Um, so here's a close up of it. And the way that she designed the pattern, it was so easy to follow. It was used, she used a knitting chart for the lace work. So if you really like knitting charts, this is a project for you for sure. Um, yeah, so unfortunately I finished this in the middle of May, right as it got warm up here in Minnesota, um, and so I haven't really been able to wear it yet, and I might not be able to wear it until September, but I will be looking forward to the day that I finally get to. Okay, so the next project I wanted to show you is some socks. Here they are. They are the Scandinavian Sock by Sari Nordland. Um, I absolutely love this pattern. It was exactly what I wanted was some really intense color work socks. Um, it wasn't that hard though to make. I really liked it because um, in the knitting pattern there wasn't more than five stitches of one color so you didn't have to do any long floats so it made it very seamless and easy to just work your way down without having to worry about those long floats. Um, the yarn I used may have been a mistake 
and I knew it was going to be a mistake, but I still knit it anyways. Um, I was using up some old scrap yarn from a mitten project that I made for my mom this year. And I just really liked these colors together. It is Rauma Garns, um, some type of wool. I'll put it in the description. Um, and it's not sock yarn. And I knew that I should have used sock yarn, but I was impatient to order sock yarn, so I just started knitting with this yarn. I did run out of the yarn and had to go back to the yarn shop, and even the woman there was telling me that I should use sock yarn, and I still didn't listen to her. Um, so these are probably just going to be some house socks that I wear around and not in boots to try to extend their life as much as I can. Um, loved the pattern so much that I started making another pair. Um, so I want to show you this bag first that the socks are being stored in. This adorable bag. It's not even official knitting bag. I ordered some shoes a couple weeks ago and they arrived in this bag and it's this perfect linen material and I'm like how great for a project bag. I love it so much and it has the little drawstring. Big fan of it. So let's see what's inside. Same sock, different color as you can see here. There it is, this nice oxblood color with like a light gray. Um, it really shows the pattern more too, which I liked. Um, again, I used the same type of yarn as the blue ones, so I'm just knitting another pair of house socks. Hopefully it lasts longer. <laughs> we'll see. I just love it so much I couldn't resist, but going forward I am going to use sock yarn. Okay, so the next work in progress I have, or whip if you will, is the Cotton Grass Jumper by the Petite Knitter. So here it is so far. I have the yoke done and now I'm just working on the body. Um, so funny story about this sweater. I started it about a year ago um, and I am on my fourth try with it. I am somewhat of a lazy knitter. I don't like to swatch. So the first time I made it, it was way too small and I tore it all out. The second time I made it, it was still too small. I tore it out. <laughs> The third time I knit it, I made another grave error and I used two different shades of cream. So the top part was like an, uh, maybe a cream and then the bottom was an off-white. And so I knit the whole thing. I just had ribbing left on one sleeve before I noticed it in daylight that there were two different colors. and. If I'm going to be spending all of these hours making a garment, I need it to be perfect and it would have stood out to me too much. Maybe no one else, but for me I just couldn't see past the two different shades of white. So I tried cutting off the top portion of the different shade of white in hopes to knit from here up in the correct shade and it didn't work so I tore it all out again and now I made sure to get the right shade of white and here we are. I also decided that I wanted to make it more of a rustic feel so I did add a strand of Knitting for Olive's mohair to the garment to give it just like a little bit hairier look. Um, throughout the whole thing and it kind of darkened up the color too. The main yarn that I used was this Valeria 
yarn that you can get from those like crochet store chains. There was one at the mall I was working at that it just was really convenient to pop in there and grab yarn. But it's a cashmere, merino, and maybe acrylic blend. Um, I do like it. It's super soft and warm. And then the silk mohair that I added to it was this knitting for olive strand. Um, I know that the colors do not match at all, but I wanted to kind of darken up the color a little bit because this was a little too camel and I have too much camel colored clothing in my wardrobe right now. So I wanted to darken it up with this deep rust color. Um, and I am very pleased with the color again that it created. So I'm super excited to finally finish it. I think fourth time's the charm with this one. Um, and again, very excited to wear it come fall. The next project I want to show you is actually for my boyfriend. Um, it might end up being for me as well though. We're the same size, so it's pretty nice because we can borrow each other's clothes. And when I knit him a sweater, it's really like knitting a sweater for myself too. Um, so here is how far I am. So yes, a classic fisherman's sweater. Um, it's the Strandhus Pullover. It is designed by Veta Romanenkova. I know I'm butchering that name, I'm sorry. And it was designed for wool folk. Um, so just a very classic fisherman sweater. I'm obsessed. I'm using Lion Brand's Fisherman's Wool for it. I have seen this wool in the big box stores for so many years and when I first started knitting, I always just loved seeing it and I always wanted to use it for a project, but I never did. So it's kind of an ode to my younger self to be making something with this yarn. I'm actually like really impressed with it too so far, especially for being from a big box store. Um, what is the makeup of this? I think it's 100% wool, which is... Sorry, 90% wool, 7% acrylic, and 3% other, whatever that could possibly be. I don't know. But again, I am impressed. It's making a nice fabric, and it feels like a rustic wool. So, very impressed with it. Alright, so, moving on to some sewing projects. I haven't sewed a ton. I took a class in high school so many years ago and I loved the idea of sewing. Um, I recently quit a job working for a fast fashion company for almost 10 years and I really wanted to transition into a lifestyle where I'm making my own clothes and if I'm not making them I want to thrift because I really want to reduce that carbon footprint in the world and I think that's a big way that I can help out. So I can't just knit all my clothes. I can't only wear knits. I need to wear other fabrics like linen. So I just started sewing garments and I made my very first one last week which I'm actually wearing. This is the Fawn Dress by Common Stitch. I know you're not going to be able to see the whole shot. It goes just about down to my ankles. It has pockets. They're really nice deep pockets. They were super easy to make. This whole dress really was so easy to make. It was a beginner pattern, but it was such a great segue into the sewing world. Um, I loved it so much. I left them a review and they sent me a coupon for another pattern, so I immediately bought another pattern, um, which is their Pippet Loungewear set, which I just bought fabric for that I have to show you. Um, so. I don't know why, but I've been really obsessed with the color cobalt blue. Here it is. It's just a cotton fabric. 
um, that I'm going to pair with these brown buttons to give it kind of a natural look. So yeah, I'm probably going to get started on this today. Alright, well that's all I have for you today. If any of this is interesting you, um, I would please ask if you could like and subscribe below and that'll help me grow this new venture I'm going on. I will try to upload a video every two weeks. Um, we'll see how that goes though because I'm kind of a slow knitter so if I don't have any new projects to show I don't need to make a video but let's hope for the best that I am focused and I continue working on these projects. Um, thank you for sticking around and I'll chat with you next time. Bye!